someone who would denounce using the fruits of Babylon, so to speak, to build up any kind of organization. Welcome back, the Young Jerks on WEMFradio.com. And that was the Foundation Movement. Song called Babylon. Babylon. Good friend of ours, E Rock. That's right. Ernesto Arroya. I said the name right this time. You did. He's a good dude. Check him out on Facebook. E Rock, uh, the son of a former Boston city councilor. And his brother was also a city councilor. Yeah. Uh, Felix Arroya, who's also running for office, has come on the show. And we endorse him, don't we, Felix? Absolutely. Felix is a great guy. Um, real down to earth dude and the kind of person that you want. Very accessible. Uh, running for register of probate in Suffolk County. And you should vote for him, and it'll be coming up on the ballot. I think he's on the primary in September, and then uh, hopefully he'll be on the ballot in November. So yeah. definitely, those elections are coming up. We're going to be covering a lot more of those candidates. We might even have Felix back up here. Got to have him back. And Ernesto Erock too, because he's the man. I mean, that guy, I want to see him run for office. I'd be so excited if he ran for office. Yeah, he, uh, he's he's barking at it right now, but who knows? He might he might change his mind down the road. He I think he takes more of a little radical stance than uh, than his pops. That's what we love, though. <laughs> he, he he talks it on Facebook. You should check him out. Um, we're, we we were also getting in. in you know, it's funny because the foundation. You know, I met them uh, way back and saw them and blown away by their live performance. And then I, I actually booked them on the Freedom Rally a few times. Yep. And they were. F- phenomenal at the freedom rally that was how i first met them actually was you know that interest that they had ernesto did at playing the freedom rally and now on the phone we have someone who's been there all along at the freedom rally producing the event a lot of the production you know the permitting he, he basically the person if if he if he wasn't around i don't know if they, they i know there wouldn't have been i don't know if there would be now but there wouldn't have been a freedom rally bill downing on the phone the guy who uh, basically has been running this Freedom Rally for years, running, producing all the uh, production behind it, and now he's, as we talked about, suing with the patients, suing the Mass DPH over these caregiver rules. Three different things that he's suing the DPH about. One is uh, the caregiver rule, one-to-one ratio that we've talked about over and over and over again that we pr- protested. Which is ridiculous. R- ridiculous. <laughs> the second thing that we protested and not liked is the DPH trying to charge patients 50 to 100 bucks in the future through their regulations. Also ridiculous. Also ridiculous. And p- some patients have already paid that, even though they don't have to now. They're, they keep going back and forth about like, this. Oh, yeah, They're you, scared. You to have it. to apply. Wait, yeah. no. Don't apply. Stop. Yeah, stop applying. Because we, we don't know how to process the money. Hold on. Wait. Apply, <laughs> apply again. Yeah. And and that third thing was uh, actually built down. And what was the third yeah, thing? Bill, you tell us. Yeah. Well, uh, they wrote up a regulation that said that uh, caregivers can can charge patients for the direct costs of the cannabis that they offer, but that they can't be compensated for their services. So. Which is also ridiculous. What right. in any type of transaction in this world? Why can't you exchange compensation? It's that's unheard of. Yeah. Well, why not? Is because they just wanted to get rid of caregivers. Is that that's why not? And they, you know, they, the law says that patients are allowed to have caregivers, and the Department of Health didn't really like the law the way it was written, allowing caregivers. So they did what they could to try and change the law, and they can't do that. They're not allowed to do that. So before the DPH actually issued its regulations, there was an actual caregiver system that was working in Massachusetts. That, that's correct, right? It was, it was just starting because they drew uh, the law had only been enacted on January 1st, and they published their regulations in May, so it was only five months later, and then they enforced the regulations starting in June, um, supposedly enforced the regulations, but they, of course, didn't enforce these caregiver regulations until a um, uh, couple weeks 25th. back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... There was, yes, there was an operating caregiver system in place before these regulations were initially passed. Yankee caregivers at that point had about 90 patients. Uh, So obviously it's grown quite a bit since then. Um, But uh, they never communicated with us in any fashion. Um, We had sent them letters every time we signed up a new patient. So they've gotten over a 1,000 of those letters from us. And... um, they never responded to us at all. The only communication we ever got from the Department of Health was a nasty letter saying, stop that. 
um, you know, it would have been nice if they'd at least given me a call back in June and said, you know, hey, Bill, we appreciate you're trying to help out the patients, but it looks like you've got more than one here. Um, but it's kind of like the Waco thing. You know, they don't want to call you and talk sense. They don't want to be nice to you. They want to burn your house down. Yeah, and they want to put it out in the media, too, and have it one-sided and uh, trade the access for you know, the information for access that they have with the Globe and the Herald, which is a joke. Um, Bill, what, you know, we, this, I think people need to understand that this is happening right now. You filed suit. You have a court case or something coming up, a hearing, I believe, right, on Wednesday? Yeah, that's a hearing on our injunction. And, uh, and we're, getting, we're seeking an injunction because the lawsuit might take a lot, quite a while to get figured out. But in the meanwhile, we're hoping that patients don't continue to suffer irreparable, irreparable harm by being denied their cannabis medication. And uh, so that's why we're seeking an injunction. If, we're, if we win the injunction, then we'd be able to operate and, until the suit was finally settled. That would be great. And that would immediately allow patients to get service from Yankee caregivers and other caregivers in Massachusetts. And it was, you know, for five months, you were starting to see that there were caregiver services available. I was seeing them. I was very excited that patients were, like when patients call me, I could say, yes, there are some services available. I, there are places I can direct you. Yes, you can get help and you're a cancer patient. But now that it's not available. It's It's been denied since this. Right. And in effect, what's happened is, you know, all the people who were doing their due diligence, the ones who were trying to operate according to the rules and obey the law by reporting to the state every time they signed up a patient, those caregivers, they all got letters telling them to cease and desist because the state had records on them and knew they had patients and everything. The caregivers who, you know, do it illegally, who who don't register with the state, those, of course, are the ones that are allowed to continue to operate. Yeah, isn't that true? Because, you know, that's, I think, the whole thing, what DPH has actually done, is they had people who were legal caregivers for, for four or five months, and now they're not. And, yeah. and, and, and there's more illegal caregivers. That's really who's been servicing the pa- some of these patients, and it's just not right. It, it needs to come out in the open. We passed a law that allowed caregivers, if there isn't dispensaries, are opening, you know, and, and that's the law, and, and the DPH yeah. is breaking the law, and that's why I'm so excited about this lawsuit because I think you actually could win it. I'd say it's like a 50-50, depending on the judge you get. You should win, but I know about the institutional, how things can shake out, but you guys should win. You guys have the right team behind it. You've got the the law behind it. You've got the right. patients. Well, you know, I mean, we try to do things with the way the way the patients need them to be done. Exactly. So, for instance, a drug dealer doesn't necessarily publish his prices. Um, and I've been told by patients, for instance, I have a patient who's uh, a chiropractor, and his other drug dealer knows that he's a doctor, and he pays a lot more for cannabis from his drug dealer than his other friends do. And it's because the drug dealer knows he's a doctor and he can afford it. Yeah, that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, So publishing prices means that patients know that everybody's getting the same price. They know that what the price is in advance, and they know the price isn't getting bumped up on them at the last minute or something like that. So Yankee does that. We publish prices. Uh, And the prices we publish are fair to people who can afford less. So, for instance, if an ounce is $300 at Yankee Caregivers, a half an ounce is exactly half that price. Good. And a quarter of an ounce is exactly a quarter of that price. Good. That's good. Because we've never felt as though it was right to charge people who could afford less more for the same amount of marijuana. That's good. I like that. And, and like so that it doesn't just come... Something. That's, of course, something that drug dealers do on the street all the time. Absolutely. If you buy a smaller amount, you, you get screwed. a lot more for it. Absolutely. And that's why people have to, to, to buy the larger amounts. Um, Frankie, go ahead. You got yeah, something. so so Bill, it's not just about the price, though. It's also about the quality, right? Because, I mean, you're taking the, the steps to make sure that you're providing a quality medicine to, to patients, whereas, you know, a drug dealer, they get it from whoever they get it from, and they pass it off as whatever they pass it off as, right? That's right. So uh, in a couple of ways, you know, when you're saying pass it off as what they pass it off as, I'm, you're sure you're referring to the fact that if a drug dealer happens to know that green crack is very popular, 
all of a sudden the cannabis he has in his inventory all becomes green crack. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody really knows what it is. Yankee caregivers has usually got eight, ten different types of cannabis in stock at any given time. And when you have the luxury of choosing amongst cannabis, you can know actually what it is. And you can say actually what it is. So I can guarantee I've talked to the farmer who grew the Blue Dream. It's Blue Dream. I know the farmer who grew the Green Crack. It's Green Crack. There's no question about it. And then the other thing is we send all our marijuana off for testing at the MCR labs in Framingham. And they test it not only for THC and CBD and CBN and all that stuff, but also for uh, aflatoxin, which comes from molds and mildews, and also for heavy metals. Good, good. Uh, it's a lot different than buying from a drug dealer. Absolutely. And- yeah, for and that's what we want. I mean, this is what uh, DPH doesn't want to see. When, the injunction you said Wednesday. Where and when can patients show up? What, what, what time does this happen? Where Where's the location? Yeah, Bill? well, it's at Massachusetts Superior Court, which is uh, three Pemberton Square, which is right behind uh, Center Plaza in downtown Boston. And the hearing starts at two o'clock on Wednesday, and it's in room three zero four, room three zero four. 3 Pemberton Square, Massachusetts Superior Courthouse, right in smack, smack in downtown Boston. The closest uh, train stations are both uh, uh, State Street Station mm-hmm. and Government Center, probably about equidistant. Government Center is closed right now, so, so go to Mark- Park Street, yeah, anywhere yeah, over Park there. Park Street, Park, sorry, yeah. not State Street, Park yeah. Street. Yeah, that's probably the better one. All, any of those over there, you know, that area. And so, yeah. and so, Bill, is there any kind of protections at this point in the lawsuit for patients who don't necessarily want to out themselves as, as medical marijuana patients? Well, uh, you know, yeah, there's, there's a couple of things they can do. You know, if they don't want to out themselves, they, they, they can send comments. I have a special email box set up for people who just want to rant and rave at DPH, kind of like an Ann Landers box. <laughs> Uh, and that's uh, dph at yankeecaregivers dot com. Uh, but somebody reads them all, so you know if you want to run around even know that somebody reads it, then you know sometimes that helps. Awesome. Um, now, if you're a patient who receives a letter from the Department of Health, then you can participate in the suit with us. Uh, and to some degree, other people who are registered with Yankee who just can't get the services now, they are being harmed as well. So there's no reason they couldn't join the suit as well. Uh, and that requires that they go to the website and they, they'll find that there's a release form on the website that allows me to tell our attorneys that they're a patient. And once that happens, then the attorneys can contact them and find out what it is, how they wanted to help and see how we can facilitate that. Excellent. So uh, th- you also have this uh, you know, injunction about trying to, because uh, I know that 16 patients have signed on, Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm suing DPH, but you want you know that you you have a thousand patients, and you know a lot more will sign on if they can protect themselves by being anonymous. You know, yeah. for employment and healthcare purposes, you can be denied insurance still in the mass, state of Massachusetts for medical marijuana use. You can be denied employment. There are reasons why people want to remain anonymous. Well, is that going to happen? Uh, let's, let's be clear. Yes, you can be de- denied employment not only for admitting that you use medical marijuana, but also just for the fact that you have a medical infirmity. Correct. Um, but um, they, they can't deny you health insurance here. That is one of the good things. Is that true? Because yeah. I, I, was, I was wondering that myself. Like, Yeah, no, they can't. Good, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I've also heard cases of people being denied, like, organ transplants. And, I mean, it's that that's that's oh, where that, I get worried about. Yeah, yeah, now that kind of stuff I have heard is true. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's so ridiculous. there's a lot of risk. I mean, that that's the problem with this stuff. People don't, uh, the unintended consequences, there's still a war, even w- when we still legalize it. People, the first guy in uh, Washington State that bought the, the weed and was on television for illegal weed, he lost his job. You know, this right. still happens. It's like, <laughs> right. it's well, so a ridiculous. Lot of patients, when they tell their doctors that they use medical cannabis, the doctors, uh, you know, refuse to give them other prescriptions. I know. I mean, I I just told my dentist I use it. You know what I mean? So I mean, right. I this I have these conversations all the times with doctors, and I just bring it up, and I'm just I leave it at that. I tell them, you know, this is my condition. That these are the pills I don't take anymore, and this is what I do take, and they're like, awesome. <laughs> you know, so there there is it is good to see that some medical doctors are getting it. 
Right. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, you still read articles about people who are writing about, uh, for instance, recently there was an article about some parents who had a child who had epilepsy. Oh, yeah. And they were writing about how, oh, we tried this, uh, this uh, ketonic diet first. Uh, and that's where they switch the child from a diet that has, you know, normal amounts of protein and fiber and stuff to a diet that's virtually entirely fat. It's called a ketonic diet. And that was their first line of how, how we're going to reduce epilepsy in our child. And then the second line was a deep consideration of surgeries. And, of course, surgery for epilepsy is usually brain surgery and a lot of times... You know, I mean, you're, you're messing with the brain there. It's scary. It's and, risky. You know, and, and then finally, she said in this article that, you know, after we'd explored these options and they didn't seem to fit well with our our needs, then we started considering medical marijuana. Yeah, that's like, that's yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's this is a yeah. product that's. Yeah, the toxic dose level is forty thousand times. You just—that's so. The yeah, level. you're so right because that this is the exact conversation I had with my dentist, and my dentist agreed with me. She, you know, because my condition is a back condition, and it's like, well, surgery. That's a risky surgery. It's a really spinal fusion. You know, I'm talking about two or three surgeries being out for eight months. You know, out of work, like you know, risking being paralyzed if they screw it up. You know, like these are the things people have to contemplate. Or I can take a. Um, a non-toxic substance that's non-addictive that has a pleasant effect that makes me feel right. good. I mean, what is and the I'm issue? Sure the dentist understood the dangers of the non-aspirin uh, anti-steroidal uh, <laughs> products because, of course, now the public is learning that these things have never been a properly approved drug and that they melt your liver. Yeah, I can't take those things. They kill me. I, I'm, I only take those if the cannabis isn't strong enough. Cannabis is a lighter drug, lighter substance. Right. But it's not, it, you, it's know, not but you Once alone. in a while. It's, it's yeah. everybody. I, exactly. Them. Exactly. I mean, they just don't know it yet. I know. I know. Yeah. And that's why the people have to be careful with even the uh, Tylenol and well, Tylenol audio. kills people. Yeah. It yeah. kills people every year. Yeah. Like look look it up. Like you can go to the the you know the National Health Institute and look at the death numbers from, you know, Tylenol and Percocet and all these different, you know, pain, you know, medications. And then you look at weed and it's like, "Oh wait, no, nobody died from weed." Yeah. And we're not uh, talking about if you have a headache <laughs> and you take two Tylenol and it works great. We're talking about people that have pain and issues every day for 10, 15, yeah, like 20 serious. years. Yeah, no, every day you have to you have right. to contemplate. We're also yeah. talking about just completely unrealistic attitudes that are yeah. born of of reefer madness. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, one of one of my favorite things that I think about every once in a while is you know a, a six year old child can walk into any drugstore anywhere around here, empty the shelf of aspirin, fill their cart with aspirin. They could they can have a hundred bottles of aspirin in there, walk up to the counter, buy it and walk out of the store and nobody would blink. And, you know, aspirin kills about 7,000 people every year. Yeah. Isn't that an example? Of the zero restrictions on it. Yeah, look at the propaganda. Like, we don't even think of that. And and that's how out to lunch the Herald and the police chiefs and all these clowns are at the DPH that are against us. It's like, you look at the real risks to children when you bring up all this reef of madness BS that we always say. But, uh, Bill, we do have to wrap it up, but I, I want to uh, get to a couple more things. Number yeah. one, do you think you can win this? And when do you think we might see relief? Patients. Well, you know, Mike, you know, you know my, uh, you know my attorney intimately. Yes, and Steve he, Epstein. He, yeah, and he, you probably know that he is not one to make uh, statements lightly. Yes, he when he says something, he means it. That's right. He is bullshit. Not, no, he doesn't fool around a lot. <laughs> yeah. he, he's not a joker. Uh, he's a very serious guy, and he told me after he saw the regulations published way back in May. He had had a chance to read them, and I spoke with him about maybe four days after they had been published. And he said, well, you know, these caregiver provisions, they'll never stand in court. So it was way, way before I ever contemplated that we'd be going to court to try and overturn those regulations that Steve had told me that they were not uh, legitimate. That's great. That is when, when I hear that, that gives me a lot of confidence. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... When do we expect to see this happen? Well, I mean, Wednesday, Wednesday right? Two o'clock, yep. and you know, I'm not sure how long the hearing takes, 
but the judge could give us, uh, you know, grant an injunction as soon as the end of the hearing, if we're lucky. That's awesome. Three Pemberton Square, uh, yeah. room number 304, 2 p.m., right. Mass Superior Courthouse. People need to be there Wednesday. Um, if you're a patient, you also, you know, remember you have to go through security, so don't bring anything that you uh, could have taken away. No no uh, pocket knives. Uh, right. not, no uh, no bowls. Yeah, I wouldn't bring any weed either. You yeah, know? probably I mean, don't unless bring any Maybe weed. a joint you might smoke I mean, before. if you have a card, actually, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. Like, how does that work? Will if they you take have, your if weed? If you have a medical card, in? like, and you go into a courthouse and you have, like, the card with you, do they take your weed? <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's worth trying to find out. Yeah. I don't either, but I mean, <laughs> if Brett, Brett's going to go down, he's going to find out for us. He's going to be. Brett, I gonna find out. Brett Kogel. Yeah, I actually did it about two weeks ago, and I forgot I had it in my pocket. And, That's life. Did they let you through? What happened? They let me right through. I have my card. Oh wow! Oh, hey, excellent. So Thanks. there you go. We heard it right from Brett, Greenleaf Magazine, helping Things us out. Things are changing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Results may vary. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> One last thing, Bill Downing. Uh, yeah. We we, uh, we just saw this thing in the Herald. We're going to hit this on the next segment. The Herald is just so friggin' ridiculous. Their editorial, uh, their editorials, it's from their uh, Herald staff editorials. It's written by the top wi- big wigs at the Herald that run the staff editorial department. And they keep writing these ridiculous editorials about medical weed. And the latest one says that we should restart the whole program. We should be like New York, no smoking of marijuana. What What is your response to that? Uh, well, I think that Boston, the people in the Boston Herald, the editorial staff, the Boston Herald, knows almost nothing about medical marijuana, and that they that they would push their completely uninformed opinion on everyone else <laughs> seems fairly typical. Uh, I mean, after all, really, you think about it, the Herald is a struggling uh, publication, failing. Yeah. Yeah, failing publication, and they need to grab headlines. So they do, you know, sensationalistic stories, and this is another in a long series of sensationalistic stories trying to bump up some publicity for themselves um, because they know they're going down the tubes. Lame. Yeah, it's so lame, too. It's like, Jesus, you're so bankrupt when you're using that on your your, your new staff is writing this crazy BS that all yeah, your listenership, you know, your readership. Like, kind of like yeah. Howie Carr. Yep. You know, and you and I know how Howie works. You yeah. know, I mean, he, he's he's kind of weird. Anyway. Yeah, we know. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Bill Downing. Yes, I think that's it. You nailed it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> thank, thank you for you calling much, in, Bill Downing, and thank right, you for yeah. the lawsuit. Keep us updated on Wednesday, and uh, look, look, look in the Dig Boston because there's going to be a story coming out this week uh, with Bill Downing. Um, you know a lot of what we covered today, but thank you, Bill Downing. You're welcome. That was Bill Downing of Yankee. Uh, are we still live? Yeah, we're still alive. Right? Yeah, that was no, that was just the uh, the echo. That was, that was the the the, the uh, phone kicking off. All right, yeah, so that, that was, was Bill Downing of Yankee Caregivers. That's right. Yeah, and uh, also a mass care normal um, suing the Mass Department of Public Health with right. uh, sixteen patients and hopefully more to come. Yeah, Wednesday we're going to say this again. Make sure people go Mass Superior Courthouse, three Pemberton Square, room three hundred four, two p.m. Wednesday. This is when we hope to uh, see some progress with this caregiver issue that we've been talking about and we've been fighting for. This is the real big, it, a big, big moment, and we need patients to come out. I want to see a lot of people there show up 2 p.m. This is time to fight back against the DPH. We are the Young Jerks. We should take a quick break, right? Yeah, just a real quick one. And then what are we going to come back and do? We're going to come back talk about the Herald. We're going to come back and hang out with uh, Brett here from Greenleaf Magazine. Talk about some products he maybe brought in. talk about some, I don't know, maybe some tasty, tasty treats. Yeah, yeah some really great, cra- like some good stuff. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the good stuff. Num nums. Yum. WEMF. Live back. The Young, young jerks. jerks. I almost did it. I almost did it. Wow, Frankie. <laughs> That's some good music we got that today. Thank music. you, Jessica. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're here on WEMF Radio, and uh, we had just had uh, got off the phone with Bill Downing from uh, Patriot Caregivers, or Yankee Caregivers, excuse me, and uh, very excited about the lawsuit that's coming up and the injunction that they're going to file on Wednesday. Yeah, and if you want to comment on any of that, what we've been covering today, 617-500-7100 is the phone number. That's right. Give us a call here. And also now, it is time... To hang, draw, and quarter the Herald. Yeah. I mean, we, we already talked about it, Bill Downing. We did. Uh, said we a did, lot already, but 
you know, this new editorial is just so ridiculous. It's, it's just completely out of touch with reality. It's, it's like, oh, the program is broken because the DPH is listening to the Herald, and so what they want to do is more of the same. They want to make it even worse. The, you know, a program that's broken, we want to make it even more broken. And 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 they're so out of touch, you know, where they where they say, uh, oh, it should be no smoking of marijuana. It should be not allowed. This is what New York says. Well, you know what? Where most of the problems are coming out in Denver and uh, with Ma- Maureen Dowd, the uh, famous New York Times columnist who I wrote this I'm ridiculous, dead. yeah, who thought she was dead because she took a, a marijuana brownie. It's the medibles that are causing the issues. And now you're saying that that's what I need to take for my back situation. Well, oh, you know what? I should uh, not take something that's going to get me high for 10 hours, which is a medical. I should actually be allowed to take something and smoke it if I want to or vape it or whatever way I want if I'm a medical patient. The best, you know, the best cure for my pain, I should decide that, not uh, the Boston Herald. Well, exactly. And, and the fact of the matter is is that smoking isn't the issue. The regulations that they're, that they're piling on top of the law are the issue. The fact that they're not allowing patients safe access to medicine, the fact that they're pushing patients to the black market, the fact that they don't know anything about weed and, and they're the want experts. it to be legal. Yeah. And they don't the want it yeah. to be legal in the first yeah. place. The losers of the campaign are now running our ca- program. And it's like the Boston, Boston Herald. They lost the campaign. You lost in 2008, Boston Herald, on, on uh, decrim. You were against decrim with all the politicians in the state, and you lost. And you weren't happy because you looked like fools. 2012 came, Boston Herald. You were wrong. You, again, endorsed. Uh, you were against it. You asked people to vote no. All the politicians in Massachusetts asked everyone to vote no on medical marijuana. You were wrong. Two-thirds said yes. Two-thirds of voters against you. Your market, even a right-wing fanatic, red meat folks, most of them are against you on this issue, even now. And you are wrong. You're morally bankrupt. You're wrong. And you look like fools. And, and you might sell more papers. If no, you I don't think you will. And like, no, they're, they're, they actually got in line. It's like, no. like, what, more than 50% of the people came out and supported it. They're not selling paper, more papers. Their, their circulation is down. They're in the toilet. You know? Enough said. Well, sometimes you do run on a TP. You know who's going up in circulation? Greenleaf? Greenleaf. <laughs> and you know who else? The Dig? Dig Boston. Oh, and I think we're up in listeners, too. I think we might be. Yeah. So, you know, I guess the Herald is wrong. And, oh, Brett, we, do you want to weigh in on this, Brett, Brett Cogill from Greenleaf Magazine? Let me tell you, I have nothing to say about the Boston Herald. They have everything is totally wrong. They don't want to talk about medical marijuana, like you said. They just want to just to get it all out of here. They want the alcohol. They want the liquor stores. They want people to pay them. Look at Marty Walsh doesn't even want them in the city. That doesn't. That's insane. You do not want medical marijuana dispensaries in the Boston city. That's going to bring so much money to the city, and it's going to give patients and jobs, access to and medicine. And in exactly, the city. exactly. It's it, it's totally insane. But like I said, you can go to South Boston. You find a liquor store every corner, Absolutely. and they're open at seven in the morning. Yep, and they want to. You know, it's. It's it's just craziness that we're listening to the Herald at this point. And you know what? I don't think people are listening. I think uh, when you look at the comment section, it's mostly people saying, you guys are a bunch of idiots, and you're a bunch of fools, and we know the truth. And uh, the the comment, when you have a comment section that is more educated on the subject <laughs> than the editorial staff, you know you have a problem. And this is probably one of the only issues that you see this on. I mean, the, the, I think that uh, the media is so bankrupt on so many issues, but... It's on the marijuana issue. The public gets it. They really get it for the most part. And, they do. And, yeah. that's, and that's why more than 50% of the people have supported both decrim, have supported medical. And they're and not are, smoking weed. You know, like, yeah, that's no, the thing. That's people. the myth. You know, the, the typical uh, person against it that will come up will be like, well, that's because they're all smoking weed. And it's like, really, only about 10% of the population smokes yeah. weed. So there's about 50% there that think the policy is ridiculous and they don't smoke weed. And you know what else we're doing right now? Well, this is the other little topic we're going to get to before we leave. As I take like three or four of these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one. Yeah. These are... Uh, oh, Brett, Brett Kogel has offered us uh, some great treats today. You heard his, his uh, special riff he did for us from the Thai Times Cannabis Cup where, he, where I said he was in weed nirvana. He, he Brett loves to bring in the products. He brings the you know he goes out to San Francisco and L A and Oakland and Denver and all over the world and he brings back these things, these special treats. And this is one of them. This is uh, Ani Dolores medical cannabis savory pretz, pretzels. 
that we're trying right now. Oh my God, are these things delicious? <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> Professionally packaged with all the THC content listed. Brett, tell us about these things as we chew them. Oh, they're just amazing. If you're a card mm. holder, you can actually get these instead of taking a, a pill or anything like that. You take a couple of these delicious pretzels that are, have all the green ingredients in the back. They're ingredients. telling you what you're getting, and you're not going to wake up with some strange hangover because you took some type of medicine. And then, like you said, they're absolutely delicious, mm. aren't they? Yeah, they really are They're delicious. vacuum sealed. They look like I just got them out of Walmart, and that's yeah. how beautiful pack- packaging they are. Um, they're just amazing. Unbelievable. And we also got some smokables, too. I mean, we, you know, the thing is, we like all this uh, different medicine. Um, I'm a huge fan of the medical marijuana, and everybody knows that we got in Greenleaf. I brought in some OG, some beautiful, delicious OG bud that I wanted you guys to look at. It's great for patients. Can we take a picture Uh, of this? It's it's gorgeous. Can we take some pictures of this stuff later? (laughs) And maybe smoke some of that later? Can I cuddle with it? Can we have that after the show? (laughs) You can enjoy that. It's that's a great, the great thing about this state, if you're a crowd holder, you can actually have this and you know, help you out. Wow. That's amazing. And if you guys are looking for caregivers, give Greenleaf a call. I have thousands of caregivers that are looking for patients, and, and we are willing to help anybody out there that that's, needs help. They, Plain we, and simple. Would you say they're legal caregivers? All legal they? caregivers. <laughs> Plain and simple. In Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Maine, we have so many people out there willing to help that are always looking to help patients. That's good to hear. Crunchy. Crunchy. We're eating these uh, nice pretzels right now. They also make a delicious popcorn. I mean, Auntie Dolores makes just an amazing truffles. I mean, and like you said, look at them. They look like you just bought them out of a store. Yeah, no, absolutely, and they and then they're they're, del- they're delicious. Can you hear me chewing? These oh, are. I'm trying. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to give everyone the experience. Of, yeah. uh, <laughs> these have these have uh, 127 THC. So you eat six of these, and this is what you're going to receive. So six of them is about per dose. It's like smoking a joint. See, I like the medibles on the weekends when I can relax. You know, I have this show, and then I go home, and I just, you know, this is perfect timing for me. The show's just about over, and I'm taking my medible and walking home. <laughs> walking home with my uh, camera, my, you know. They're sugar-free, and they're yeah. vegan. Yeah, they are vegan. Perfect. <laughs> and perfect timing, Brett. There's no MSG. Yep. No high fructose corn syrup. Good product. Just delicious. Delicious. And this is uh, what we want. We want uh, good product that's, you know, in a package, tested, uh, reg- you know, not, re- I would say self-regulated. This company, I don't know how much regulation they have over them. It seems like they want to put out the best product. That's what we want to see. And that's what can naturally happen if the government gets out of the way, if the DPH gets the head out of the, if the DPH turned around and said, actually, we do want to help patients. We're not a bunch of sellouts who are working for the just say no crowd. We'll just let consenting adults engage with one another and not harm other people and benefit from it yeah that's it and that's what we're working on it's not brain surgery yep yep Probably we, is all we, the patients need to speak up. Yep. Everybody needs to come up. Everybody needs to talk about it. Stop sitting behind the desk. Stop sitting behind the closet. Just talk about it. Everybody wants to talk about it, so talk about it. Yep. And, you know? uh, we, and it will become legalized in 2016, but you will want the medical side because it's going to be very expensive. So keep on the fight we, we got in caregivers, growing, everything regarding the medical marijuana field in this state. And that's what we're doing on Wednesday, so uh, we do have to sign off. The the uh, smoking in the girls' room is coming up. There's a smoking full the crowd over room. there. Valerie Malt is here, I see. Cindy, the attorney. I see one of my dogs, Gruff, Carmelita. Robbie Patillo is here, too. And uh, Meredith, they, you know, they got a big crew here. I think Ellen's here. A lot of people uh, coming out, smoking in the girls' room. I got a lot of these these uh, pretzels ready to go. <laughs> it's Wednesday, Mass Superior Courthouse for the injunction, and hopefully we win the lawsuit. Maybe it will be decided even that day. 3 Pemberton Square, room 304, 2 p.m. Show up, support the caregiver lawsuit, the patient lawsuit against Mass DPH. This is the latest lawsuit, and the first one actually with patients suing the Mass DPH. Show up on Wednesday. We're the Young Jerks. We do have to sign off. We have to, do have to get going. We want to thank Jessica, Jessica for yes. uh, being behind the board and Brett for coming in, and and uh, I want to thank Bill Downing for calling in, and always uh, love having Greenleaf Magazine in here with yeah. WEMF uh, Radio with the Young Jerks, and uh, we'll see you next week. And listen to the Smoking in the Girls Room coming up next because it's awesome. Later. Bye-bye.